Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In previous videos, I've used a lot of different online IDEs, integrated development environments. Um, one of the ones I've used is coding.com. I've also used Cloud9. But the problem is a lot of these services are kind of moving towards a paid-only model. I know, for example, with Cloud9, even though I had a video about how to create accounts on there, now you can't create an account there. You have to create an account through Amazon. Um, so I wanted to talk about how to actually do this using the techniques that we've discussed in a lot of our videos. Basically, how do I get an online IDE that has a command line interface that I can use to run command line programs very easily. And you may need this if you're trying to run a classroom that's based off of uh, Chromebooks or if you have uh, limited access to being able to install software on your uh, devices, then having an online IDE may be very helpful. And I've got Code Envy up here. It's CodeEnvy.com. And it's a very good uh, online IDE. It's very robust. And so what I'm planning on doing in this video today is showing you how to set up an account on CodeEnvy.com, as well as how to run different program languages. So we are going to do C++, we're going to do Java, we're going to do C Sharp using the Mono environment, and we're also going to do Python. So first thing I want to talk about is how do I create an account so that I can make uh, code on CodeEnvy.com. And so I'm at CodeEnvy.com and I'm going to go over to this link over here on the right that says Get Started and I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I have the option to log in or create an account and I'm going to go ahead and create an account. And this is normally the login screen that I would come up to. Um, I can either log in with any of these pre-established accounts, but I'm just going to go ahead and create an account based on my email. So I've got mistapata.com. Actually, it's going to be mistapata at gmail.com. And username, uh, Tony Potter, that's me. And I'm going to go ahead and create an account. Uh, username must create digits and letters. I'll find Mr. Potter. That's my user account. So go ahead and create an account. It says, thank you for signing up. We sent you an email with a confirmation link. Click that link to verify your account. And so I've got my email up here and I should have my verify link. And I'm going to go ahead and click it. And your free account has been created. So I can complete my profile, Tony Potter. Mistapata.com. Uh, my role, well, I am an educator and my country is the United States. And I'm going to go ahead and click Get Started. And this is going to bring me up to a screen. Um, I have three gigabytes of RAM uh, available to create uh, online space. Now, they have different uh, pricing options. Uh, the three gigabytes is the free. You can add more gigabytes, and one of the benefits of adding more gigabytes uh, is that your IDE environment can stay idle for longer periods of time. Right now, if I were to leave this environment, um, anything after 10 minutes would kind of be stored away. Uh, it, programs would run in the background for about 10 minutes before they would stop running in the background. Uh, when you purchase memory, you can actually have it last a little bit longer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a workspace. So I'm going to go to workspaces over here and I'm going to create add workspace. And I have a name of my workspace. I'm going to go ahead and call it Mr. Pata because I don't like that rather peculiar thing. I'm going to have it be a personal. Now you can change it uh, to uh, shared. You can have the option of having a shared workspace where several people can work together. And then it has the options of a stack. Now, you can choose different stacks here, but I think probably the best one to start off with would be just a default blank stack. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Uh, if you have a different need, then I would go ahead and choose one of these other stacks. Uh, but once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit add, uh, create up here, and that's going to create my, my workspace for me. And so what you'll see is something very similar to what we've seen on previous IDEs. I'm going to have a bottom area down here, which is going to be my console where I can enter stuff. And right now it's just going through the process of creating this in the background. I've got an area over here, which is where I could access files um, and I can create projects and, and do stuff with it. And then over here is a rudimentary text editor. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this a little bit bigger down here. And this is going to be my command area, this is basically where I'm going to uh, run commands. So I'm going to be predominantly in this area down here. 
<clears throat> so uh, the first thing I want to do is I personally like a command line editor better than I like trying to edit this stuff up here in the online editor. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. So now that I'm at this screen, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and install some software. And I'm going to be using apt-get to install the software. But before I do that, I need to update it so that it knows what the most recent packages that are available to upstate from are available. So I'm going to go ahead and sudo. This allows me to run at an elevated user as the root user. apt-get is the command that I'm going to be running. And in the apt-get environment, I'm going to say update. And update is going to go through, it's going to go through all the available sources that Ubuntu has for me to receive software from and basically update the list so that now I can tell it to install a particular software package and that package will be available. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen and I'm going to apt get install and I'm going to install nano. Now nano is a uh, command line text editor. It's a very simple uh, command line text editor, but it's very easy, uh, very approachable for new programmers. And what this allows me to do is that I can go into nano and create a program. So I could create a program like hello world dot uh, python. And then I can create a python file in here. So I can just do print hello world. And then I can exit, making sure that I save to hello world dot, and actually I want to call it hello world dot py. And yes, I want to save it under a different name. So now I have hello world dot py. I can run Python hello world dot py. And it should run my program for me. Notice it says hello world. I can use this nano editor to create any project. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with uh, hello world.java. And so I'm going to create a Java program. So I'm going to say uh, class uh, public class hello world. And then I'm going to do public static void main string args. And then I'm going to say system.out.println hello world, close my main and close my class. So now I can do a javac on hello world.java. That allows me to compile that Java file from the command line. And then I can run the bytecode by doing Java hello world and it'll print off our hello world message as well. So Python and Java come in right out of the gate. I don't need to actually install anything. The only thing that I really need is a command line text editor. Uh, but of course, I don't need to install a command line text editor. I could very well just use the editor up here as well. Um, if I want to do something in C++ or if I want to do something in C Sharp, it's going to take a little bit more uh, to get that to work. Um, if I'm going to do C++, then I actually need to uh, do the apt get install, and I want to install GCC. Now, GCC is the GNU version of C++, and this is going to allow me to uh, create uh, C++ and also plain old C files. And so it's going to take a, a few seconds to run this. So now I can go into nano and create a uh, hello world.cpp file. And then I can go in here. I can do uh, using namespace std and include io stream. And then I can do int main and then just uh, do a c out hello world with an end line and then return zero and now what I sorry I also forgot I need to install one other thing to get uh, C++ to run that's to install the G++ so I'm going to do that real quick Okay, so now that I've got the uh, Hello World program that we wrote just a few minutes ago, uh, so now I'm going to run the G++ with my Hello World dot uh, CPP file with the output being 
hello.exe. And now I can run hello.exe and it says hello world. So that's what I need to do to get uh, C++ to work. Uh, if I want to get C Sharp to work, I have to install a program called so in order to get C-sharp to work, I'm going to have to install a program called Mono. So I'm going to do sudo apt get install mono complete. And this is going to install the command line version of Mono for me. Notice it is a rather large package, and we do have that limited amount of space on our, on our um, project. So just be aware of that if you're insisting on making a uh, C-sharp program. So we're going to go ahead and install all of this. It's going to take a few minutes. Now that all that's set up, I'm going to go ahead and create a C Sharp command line program. So I'm going to do nano hello world.cs. So I'm going to go ahead and create a program here. So I'm going to do class hello world. And then inside here, I'm going to do public static void main string args. And then in here, I'm going to have a console.write line hello world and close my braces should be string array args got to remember to put using system up here it's kind of important so now if i try and run uh, mcs hello world.cs then it should run. So, hello world.exe, then it's going to run hello world for us. So, we can have all four uh, languages, uh, C, Java, C, Sharp, and Python, at our disposal when we're working from the command line here. Um, of course, I'm a little bit rusty on running these, so hopefully I'll be getting a little bit better. But, uh, Code Envy is a very good online IDE to get this. Uh, just it just takes a few minutes to get up and running and you can be programming in any of these languages. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.